Now take a look at the impact of the Lesotho crisis and the Nigeria church collapse. For an insight on these political and social events, I'm joined in studio by The Economist magazine's Herman Warren, who's the network director in Africa. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Jenga. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. Good. Um, Ralph is just saying to us, Ebola seems to be an African problem rather than an uh, international problem. What effects is it having on the continent, one, and two, what economic effects is the Ebola outbreak having? Well, I think it's a, it's a human tragedy. It's not just an African tragedy. And as Ralph was alluding to, the world is becoming so interconnected that it's very difficult to isolate something just to one country or one region. Clearly in the uh, nations at the epicenter of the, the virus at the moment, which in the main are Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea, it's having a major impact, right? Um, and if one would just look at the reports over the last couple of days, the World Health Organization is estimating that at least 20,000 people are going to be impacted uh, in the next two months. And, and right now, we're not looking at that infection level. And the Center for Disease Control in the United States is estimating that at the high end, in a worst case scenario, by January 2015, there may be over 1.4 million infections. So it, it, is, uh, it is significant. Uh, it's having an impact on the growth, as I was saying, particularly in those nations uh, uh, that are primarily affected. But what we're also seeing is the rippling effects. So there are reports that tourism in South Africa, which faces uh, no real risk of, of an Ebola outbreak, is being impacted as overseas mm -hmm. travelers and others are saying, well, I'd rather not go to Cape Town for my conference or to go at the top of Table Mountain to, to look at that incredible, awe-inspiring view. So. Um, as much as South Africa and other countries aren't impacted by it, the, the ripple effects are unfortunately having um, very real economic uh, implications. No, Liberia's finance minister has come out to say all the nations that have pledged cash um, should actually give Liberia their cash now because they're struggling to such an extent that they they can't almost see you know a future for their currency and the economy. Is the world doing enough to rally around the countries at the epicenter that you've spoken about? Well, I guess the short answer would be, would be no, but I think that there have been some promising uh, and appropriate actions uh, being taken, albeit perhaps too late, but, but nonetheless it's being taken. So South Africa, for instance, is uh, spearheading this effort in Sierra Leone to, with, with private sector cooperation, opening a, a hospital in Sierra Leone, so NetCare and others are part of that. Mm. Uh, Barack Obama recently announced that there would be some intervention, I think primarily focused in Liberia, opening up uh, facilities to, to cater for, uh, for those who are being impacted by the disease and may already be affected in terms of having the disease itself, isolation wards, etc. So, so that would be my, my response my response to that. Yeah. Okay, well, one of the other issues that we were talking about is the um, political instability or the political drama in Lesotho. I wanted to find out how that would affect South Africa both economically and generally. Right. Um, I, I think that there are a few uh, noteworthy points with regards to the instability in the political situation in Lesotho. Um, one would be that South Africa exports about eight, at least over the first seven months of 2014, there were about eight billion rand of South African exports which headed to Lesotho. Uh, it's a very small percentage of South African exports, but nonetheless, every little bit counts, particularly when, when one takes into account that the South African economy has been growing so anemically, mm -hmm. right? Uh, contraction first quarter, second quarter, l well less than 1%, 0.6%. The other issue would be that we get a significant amount of water from Lesotho. And we've been having um, some disruptions to supply in Gauteng as of late, not related to Lesotho, but however, about 25% of all the water that, funk, that, that serves Gauteng, the economic hub of South Africa and a giant uh, of economic activity on the broader continent, uh, comes from, 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 from Lesotho. So there's no indication right now that that would be disrupted, but nonetheless, uh, an environment of instability certainly would, mm -hmm. would raise that on the radar as far as, um, as, as, far as that's concerned. Uh, the, the other issue would be that 35% of male, well, it's estimated between 25 and 35% of male wage earners from Lesotho are working in South Africa, and half of the Lesotho uh, population live below their official poverty line. So any environment of instability obviously might lead to an influx of people looking for refuge. Um, and that's you know, ideally not a situation that South Africa would, would, would want to deal with. So that's on the, on, the, on the South African side. On the Lesotho side, 39% of their GDP flows from government. And government is the largest employer in Lesotho. 
So that also has knock-on effects. So one, it's the, it's the employment situation, which again links back to the, the, the South African impact if people are looking for other opportunities because they don't have viable ways to make ends meet in Lesotho. And the other is that the government itself also, um, if I didn't mention this, also purchases from the private sector which could impact on those exports amongst others that I, re I alluded to earlier. Uh, the, the other issue from an economic perspective is that uh, Lesotho has a very vibrant and growing light manufacturing sector, which is heavily dependent upon foreign investment. And obviously for foreign investment, you need an environment which is conducive to retain that which you have, as well as to attract new. Mm -hmm. And a situation of instability wouldn't be that sort of conducive, uh, conducive environment. Uh, and then, of course, Lesotho is heavily dependent on imports for its food security. It's only able to meet about 20% of its food needs, so the balance of, that, of, of what's required must be imported. So you must have foreign currency to do that. You must have trade routes that are secured, etc. So an environment of insecurity and instability would certainly have negative impacts from an economic perspective. Mm. Thank you very much for coming to join us at Fuka Africa. That's Herman Warren. He's the